Hey, it's Becky. Today, I'm taking a look inside the Muse S meditation headband. This brainwave sensing device uses conductive fabric sensors to track your brain activity. And that biometric data informs the app's meditation and sleep programs. Keep watching to see me try it out, take it apart, and analyze the design and manufacturing of the circuitry inside. My Muse S arrived in a bubble mailer with a very nicely designed, albeit a bit excessive, smooth paper and cardboard packaging. I'm sure some nice folks spent a long time making all this. It seems like it should be recyclable, although there are some magnets comprising the box closures. I think you're meant to keep one of the boxes anyway to reduce the oxidation that can happen to this type of conductive fabric in the open air. I think it's silver plated and silver tarnishes quite easily. Another clue is this anti-tarnish paper that's included in the box with the band. Even without the logo, I recognize that stuff from my silver jewelry selling days. The main circuitry lives in a hard plastic enclosure that attaches to the band with magnets. The band has two hard plastic protrusions that house these magnets, as well as the electrical contacts connected to the fabric sensors. There is a hole in the headband for the optical heart rate monitor so it can see your skin. The device charges over USB and has a sleek LED display along one edge. When you put it on, the app lets you know the signal reliability from all the sensors before each meditation or sleep session. The trickiest ones for me were over the ears since I had to move my hair out of the way to make a good connection. Since I don't find earbud style headphones very comfortable, I was glad the soft headband is compatible with my big soft headphones. For this calibration, find a comfortable position and close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Muse is now listening to your brain signals. Relax and let your mind flow naturally. The app has several biofeedback audio experiences to try where the sounds are informed by your brain waves. Here I've got my microphone inside my headphones so you're hearing what I'm hearing. You can receive 10% off your Muse when you click my special link I've got in the description or use the discount code on the screen. As is routine for my teardowns, I reached out to Muse to ask for a sample device and they said yes. This doesn't affect any part of this video except my budget, but I'll always tell you when I got something for free. Smokey tried it too with the ambient music soundscape. Neither of us frequently meditate, and we both got pretty chaotic sounds while filming, but I was able to experience more range in the soundscape when alone and not on camera, and it was super interesting to try this device out. If you've been following my work for some time now, you may remember I've also taken apart Muse's first headset a few years ago. I can say that I enjoyed some audio environments better than others, especially for trying to sleep. Those are annoying. Before I took apart my Muse S, I sent it off to be CT scanned by the folks at LumaField. They graciously agreed to scan another teardown gadget for us, so we can see the insides in their intended state. We'll come back to these scans later. Now onto the part you came here for, the taking apart. This one is a treat, folks, let me tell you. The plastic enclosure popped right open without breaking, and the circuit is secured with just a few bits of tape and a single screw. We can see that the LED effect is achieved with some light pipes that sit up against a few side-emitting surface mount LEDs. I was able to remove the entire circuit assembly without breaking anything, and here you can see it's actually three separate circuit boards connected with flex PCB material. Since the circuit came out so intact, I got to thinking I might be able to put this thing back together again, so I was careful in the way I opened up the headband. 
I used a seam ripper to remove the stitches from one edge and took a peek inside. There's a flex PCB sandwiched in between layers of foam padding. Now that the circuitry is visible, my channel's favorite electrical engineer, David Craner, is here to take a closer look at the components. Hi, David. Hey, Maggie. Hey, Andy Rooney. Happy summer. Well, let's have a look. Oh, what do you like about this circuit board? Mm, I always like the connection between the inside and the outside, so I like the pogo pins. Yeah, pogo pins are fun. These are cool for uh, mechanical connections between stuff because, you know, any kinds of small vibrations is made. You know, like when Separate, you're like, yeah. you know, like when you're like trying to like debounce a switch or something on a right. Arduino, you have those weird little vibrations that like mm -hmm. make the signal all screwed up. Well, with when you have pogo pins, that's what those they are They make for up for fixing. it with the spring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this whole enclosure and how it fits into the other part is really nice too. With the magnets, love magnets. How do they work? It's a miracle. <laughs> Magnets, how do they work? Um, Bend the other side first. Go like this? Yeah, cool. Yeah, very, it stays very, in there really Very tight. satisfying. I mean, mm -hmm. it's also cool that they chose to put magnets into this design because working with magnets in manufacturing can be really difficult. The actual closure for the headband is yeah. also a magnet, so I feel like they're like, oh, we're already doing magnets. Yeah, we're doing magnets, let's just do all the magnets. <laughs> but it's hard, it's, it's, a, it's irritating to work with magnets in manufacturing because they stick together. <laughs> And so, like, you have to be really careful about how you are storing them and how you're transporting them, because if, like, if anything messes up the pile of magnets, they all just go honk. Clunk. It, it looks to me like these magnets are actually, like, hand-glued in. Yeah, and the circuit board goes underneath guess. them. I had yeah. to kind of pull the circuit board out from underneath mm -hmm. those magnets. This is a STMicro Cortex-M4 microcontroller, which is a, uh, it's an ARM, ARM core. And so you can see that. And the crystal. Also, and also a clue, the crystal. Right? That yeah, it's a yeah. Controller, but I, we were able to locate, to look this one up. Mm -hmm. These are cool. I mean, microcontrollers are getting super beefy these days. I mean, this is a relatively inexpensive component and it runs at 80 megahertz. And, you know, some of these, I'm not sure if this particular chip has it because it's an optional peripheral, but the Cortex M4s, you can have a whole floating point unit and also a little. Um, a little digital signal processor in, inside oh. of it too. It's a really well, that's handy for something like this, right? Don't you think there's some DSP? Happening yeah, from I the could sensor? definitely, I could definitely see that being the case. So you think that's the only microcontroller? Because there's also this can over here. Okay, yeah. So this is almost definitely the wireless device mm -hmm. because if you follow this, not only because of the can, but because of the if antenna. Follow this over here. You can see oh, this little some... impedance matching network here, and then you have this little chip antenna. Chip antenna. Little chippy chip. Whew. You know, it's complicated to get wireless devices certified. Mm -hmm. So one solution that people do is that they will make a pre-designed module for the wireless and do all of the electromagnetic certification and then sell that as its own module. And then you put that onto the board that you're designing and then you have fewer things to deal with. Ready when to you're go, doing your plug design and play, process. right? Yeah. yeah. You know, you have all these geometries that they require that you do because so you can see that yeah. the, you can see that the ground plane around the chip antenna is not there to give it room so that it's not you know the fields that are coming right, out of it aren't yeah. aren't getting sucked away over here we have this little bitty little bitty battery, battery connector plug, yeah and it has plug, three wires plug. so probably because the battery is probably one of those ones with the internal temperature sensor or something oh like it that. might be cool do you want to flip um, it over? Flip it, flip it. There's a couple chips on the back side of the board. Okay, look at all these test points. Yeah, so, so many. So it's obvious that this is this board went into a test jig with pogo pins because yep. <laughs> that's what those are. Yeah. This one has a bunch of stuff around it. Oh, uh, it identified. I don't, yes. Can't remember if it's but the little thing. Identified. We know what this is. This is a Maxim, Maxim, uh, battery charge controller. You can put the little part identified thing. Right there. Love it. Love okay, it when great. that happens. All right. Can you put it over there too? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Great. The, I see. That, right. This is the battery <laughs> make, make charging. Make it like the DVD logo and we can like watch it until it hits the corner. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's three LEDs on this right thing. There. Oh, okay. That's oh, what oh, those oh. are. All right. I mean, I know those are the LEDs, but are they used for battery status? Battery charge status? I guess they are. The, those LEDs are used for multiple things. They're used to yeah. show whether it's connecting to the device. And I suppose they're also used to indicate whether the battery is fully charged or not, huh? Interesting. They hook up to the light pipes. That's why they're side emitting ones, the light That's pipes cool. on the enclosure. I like side emitting LEDs. Yeah. 
Yeah, so there's a lot of support circuitry. I mean, usually when you see a lot of capacitors around something, that usually means it has something to do with that part of the board cares about the power. Power, right? Because it's because you want it to like be, capacitors. Yeah, and you just want it to be like level and good and everything. And if there's a lot of stuff going on with power, you just usually see a lot of capacitors around. But what about this other chip? It's got a, a QR, QR code, code, and it says SH, and Inform. then a QR code, and then 141, and I wasn't able to scan the QR code I tried. I have no idea. Part unidentified. No. But then there's, like, nothing around it either. Could it be, like, it's near the USB port? Could it be some kind of USB oh, serial it could, Yeah, something? it could be, like, a, it could be the USB controller. That's a really good idea. So now, going across the Flex PCB, going down here. That's the pulse oximeter chip. Okay, so this is the... An analog devices and maximum, maximum integrated max eighty six one four zero. I keep hoping that that microchip manufacturers, when they do a collab like this, will go to the like X notation, like on the hype beast things. Well, like, so, just, I think that they're it. the same company now. I think uh, that one just bought the other one, so that's why they don't do X. Analog it's X not, Maxim. It's not analog, analog X devices Maxim. X Adidas, David. <laughs> yeah, collab, yeah. Analog X Maxim collab, yeah. No, they think they want to. See of the them. new pulse oximeter drop? Yeah. So hype. You can measure exactly how hype. Uh huh, exactly yeah. how hype. <laughs> So, I mean, we've, we've seen these types of things before. They're very popular in wearables these days. Everything's got a heart rate yeah. monitor. Everything you get a heart rate yeah. monitor. You, <laughs> you get, get a pulse oximeter. Exactly. Just look under your chair. So, you know, standard stuff. We've got. The LEDs for transmitting the light, and then this looks like a photodiode for receiving it, uh, and then the chip does some computation based upon how the light is altered by going through your flesh and blood, and then that goes into the computer, and the computer then tells you things about yourself that you'd like to know. Your heart rate, in this case. Yeah. And your pulse oximetry. Uh-huh. And then, all right, so that piece folds around. That's why that flex PCB is long, but then over here there's another... There's another PCB that is, um, it's got the pogo pins on it, mm -hmm. and it has like a little bit of extra circuitry, like this K33 chip that I could not find anywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. Any guesses? It's, it's got, got a lot of like tiny little support. capacitors and it's resistors. Got a lot of and stuff. stuff. Yeah, I have no idea. No idea what that is. And then on the other end, on the other side over here, there's these three SD chips. Look, they have SD logos on them. Yeah, I, but I couldn't find information on any of them. There's a K one nine three, and there's a K, and there's two of these K one. Well, is mean, it a G or a six? That looks like a G. I looked up both and like couldn't find G. anything on the ST website or anywhere else. But but maybe there's a clue that there's three of them and two of them are the same kind as each yeah. other. Well, this is doing, uh, this is doing brainwave stuff, right? So there's got yeah. to be some kind of, some kind of brain processor on here somewhere. Uh -huh. Like, I don't think it has any accelerometers in it or anything like that. So it could yeah, just be it. the digital signal processing stuff for could be cleaning up the... Signal cleaning stuff. Because the sensors, the fabric sensors come in through the pogo pins. So the mm -hmm. fact that these chips are close to the pogo pins leads me to believe that it's something having to do with the, yeah. the sensor. The signal that's signal. coming straight in. Mm -hmm. And then the only other chip we have to look at is inside the headband. Headband, okay. So the headband has this, like, serpentine... Flex PCB, which mm -hmm. I'm certain is for dealing with the stretch that you get when you move the oh, band. Oh, I see. See how, like, you can flex the... Yeah, look at that. And it flexes. Uh, but there's one chip in here. Here, this one. 28E. So at the bottom, 16, 18. 16, 18J. Yeah, can you see it? Uh, I couldn't find anything about this chip, and it's even covered up how many legs it is has in here, but because mm -hmm. of the scan, I could tell that it has only six legs. Yeah. You can see that it's... It's potted in, in epoxy, yeah, and that's for making sure that when the thing is bending, it doesn't crack off. Mm -hmm. We got the other side of the pogo pin and magnet connector over there. And do you know what's going on with these things way down? I, I don't. The only thing I can think of is that they're test points. Yeah. It's clear to me after looking at the inside of this with its large amount of flex PCB and soft to hard junction, why this one's more expensive than the harder, the other one that right. they make with the harder materials. Why is that? Because it's so much more complicated and flex PCB yeah. is so much more expensive to work with. And the other device does have some flex PCB, but it doesn't have any hard, soft joins mm -hmm. and uh, it doesn't have the conductive fabric. And conductive fabrics and threads are always difficult to work with too, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So, so it's true that the fabric thing is maybe not as overwhelmingly durable, but because like the sleeping aspect of it and being so soft is really, really cool. So it's more comfortable. Way more comfortable. 
Cool. All right. Well, you want to check out those CT scans? Yes. This video is sponsored by DigiKey, which carries tools for your own teardowns, as well as some of the components in the Muse S circuitry. Head to the link in the description for more info on all the parts we could identify. Okay, here's the scan. Wow. Thanks to our friends at LumaField. It's so cool, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it is really cool. Yeah, look at it. You can see these wires go to the battery. I oh, love yeah. being able to see the inside of the battery like yeah. that. Is that. Are those some ICs inside of the battery? I wouldn't be surprised because remember the battery has three yeah, has three wires. Wire. So it probably has some kind of overvolt or temperature sensing or some kind of protective yeah. circuitry. It's got stuff and you can really see the folds of the elements inside the battery, of the electrodes inside the battery. It's that. important to be extra safe when you have this thing strapped to your it's face. Pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, and and are asleep. <laughs> and are asleep. <laughs> um, so I guess did they? They must have taken this shot. Did they take this shot with the? Yeah. With the unit clipped in. So uh -huh. these, are these like both both magnets, yes. right? With each other. Yep, that's both magnets. Yeah. That's pretty neat. And then there's the. If you want to rotate, it's just yeah, yeah. Mass button. Yeah, and then there's and the pulse oximeter, pulse oximeter board. Pulse oximeter board. These are those oh, test sorry, points or whatever back. it is inside the fabric. Whatever's. You can see the. Oh, you know what? These aren't test points. These are where the fabric joins the flex PCB. Oh, it's rivets. That's the con oh, yes, it's rivets. It's yeah, rivets, cool. okay. which makes yeah, sense yeah. because you can use a rivet to join a soft, like to make good electrical contact with the. Oh uh, yeah, and you can totally see that here. From the CT scan, you can see it's a rivet. I didn't think of that before, but yeah. it makes sense now that I'm looking at it in this yeah. context. That Great. it's rivet to come to join the fabric to the flex PC. Who knew? Looking at stuff, getting a good view, <laughs> getting a good view of stuff, lets you figure out what it is. That's pretty cool. You can really see the. This is the chip antenna just floating out here. Right, because this view is showing us all of the metallic objects. Yeah, so like you can see, there's there's no ground plane or no metal or anything it's around. Just imagine it. the radio waves. Yeah. Like, yeah. Having an unencumbered, yeah. unencumbered, yeah, uh, access to you know, your phone, the world, yeah, the yeah. world. Can they be looking through this little, this little window inside the can there? So oh my good. gosh! <laughs> you can see a tiny bit yeah. inside the can. Have a peek. Boop. So then I can really clearly see, even though the chip itself is potted in epoxy. That it has six pins. Six so we get with yeah. the numbers on the top, the markings and the pin number, we should be able mm -hmm. to figure out what chip it is, but we weren't able to find it. Yeah. We got the two more magnets over there. Mm -hmm. Got the, you can see inside the USB port. And the pogo pins. I really like these things because you can really just see the actual wires that are inside of the flex piece. Mm -hmm. Just kind of like skeleton mode. So now let's just slice it out. We didn't have to. The X-rays can see from yeah. the inside. Yeah, we didn't have to take it off to see. We can't see the markings on the chip, but we could tell yeah. how many pins it is and what kind of stuff is under there. Maybe. Yeah, I see. That looks to me like it could be a crystal because I recognize mm -hmm. this like rectangle the shape. The four, right? The four yeah, so blobs. This is yeah. Probably giving timing for whatever is generating the RF signal. And then that's probably the uh, whatever BGA. chip it's got. Yeah, BGA. And then some passive components around it. Whatever it is, it's all supposed to be held at really, really good ground potential. Because you see, they're all here, like connected to this one bit of ground plane. But then you see this this section doesn't have ground plane in it, and mm -hmm. it's just connected by very small wires. And so that'll keep weird transients and noise from getting into here. So whatever is is on top of this ground plane, whatever is on top of this plane section here. The designers really wanted to make sure that it was all kept at exactly the same voltage potential, which is a motif that you see a lot in RF design. Great. Great, Great. job. Great job, Hamstring. Do you want to preview, give the give the people a preview of our next teardown? I think we should. Wow, that looks really fun. Okay. So that's that's spring, that's spring. Definitely come back next time. Yeah. <laughs> Tune in next time. Thanks, David. Don't forget to smash that like button. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. I hope you'll subscribe with the bell to be notified of my future uploads, subscribe to my email newsletter, and find me on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. This video was made with support from my sponsors and with generous donations from viewers like you through Patreon and YouTube memberships.